the interrogation of the ECU for the procedure using the Durametric. This is a very common uh, enthusiast-based tool that also has a pro version that shops can use. Um, I'm just going to go here and basically select the car that we're working with. And this is going to help us interrogate the engine's ECU, um, our engine control unit, our DME as they call it, the digital motor electronics. Um, our brain. So uh, this car is a 2002, so it's the ME 7.8 for 2002 to 2004 non-turbo and GT3 models. I'm going to select that. Okay, I'm just going to do a few checks here before I actually fire the car up because we'll kind of have to reboot this process when we do that. I'm going to open up the engine module as you can see here. First, I'm going to look and see if there's any stored fault codes. And there are no faults found, as you can see. Okay, so here we also are wanting to go to the information tab. And this will tell us how many over revs this car has seen. So the number of ignitions in range one is 11,805. Uh, number of ignitions range two has just had one, which is basically just an anomaly. So this is not 11,000 over revs. This means that, that there has been that many ignition cycles uh, basically obstructed or killed by the over rev limiter that's built into the ECU. Now, if your car is newer than this one, it will have six ranges, not just two. So this is just a general overview of what you may experience with your own particular car. Um, so after we've done that, we're going to, at that point in time, fire up the car and start looking at a few other things. Uh, one thing that I tend to do at this point in time also is to look at the ready status. So if we go to the ready status here, you can see that we pass on all of these. This tells us that no one has tried to cheat us. They haven't just turned off a check engine light because the engine had a problem um, and wanted to make it look like that everything was okay when it really wasn't. So if you have pass on all five of these, then the car has been in the ready status for an emissions test. And that basically means it has had no problems in the last you know, 20 driving cycles or roughly 350 or so miles. So uh, with that being said, we're going to start the second part of the ECU interrogation by starting the car. Okay, now that we've got the engine running, uh, we want to make sure it's at operating temperature. Now it'll fool you sometimes because the coolant temperature will actually get hotter faster than the oil temperature. So once your coolant ga temperature gauge has got to around 180, let it stay there for like 10 minutes so the oil temperature is warm. Now the reason for that is these engines and the drive system for the camshafts is hydraulically actuated. So you want to make sure that you don't have a, any faults, uh, you know, problems going on because the oil is not hot enough. So if you let it stay at 180 for about 10 or 15 minutes or come in after driving the car to do this, that's fine. So I'm going to go to the actual values here. Now all scan tools will be able to do something similar to this. The Durametric is just very easy to work with, and a lot of shops use it because of that. It's also cost-effective, and even a do-it-yourselfer can afford to, to buy this. Even the pro version is still cheap. Uh, a lot of scan tools are twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. This is less than 1000 bucks. So I'm going to go here and start checking for our first point of concern. That is the camshaft deviations. So this is the amount of crank position or crank degrees we have between both banks of the valve train and the crankshaft. So bank one is 1.41 degrees, bank two is 0.16 of a degree. Now you notice here that's a positive value and that's a negative value, but they are still within six degrees. Now a lot of shops would follow the Porsche directive for this being six degrees as a maximum allowable for the amount of deviation you can have between both banks. Here at Flat Six Innovations, and also with all the certified installers for the IMS solution, anything over four degrees is an area of concern that we feel should be corrected before you jump into doing a solution install or any retrofit. And a lot of people ask why that is. Well, the worst thing that can happen is you spend a lot of money to do something like an IMS solution this wasn't checked or it was overlooked 
and then a few weeks or a few months down the road, you have a scenario where now you get a check engine light for high cam deviations, and you then would blame a shop for the work that they've done because they were the last hands that went in there. This is a good way for the shop to protect themselves and also to help protect your investment by making sure that you've done everything you could to pre-qualify it. That's why we have this pre-qualification procedure and that's why we urge you to follow this verbatim. Okay, so now what I've got pulled up on the screen here is the rough running index of the engine. So this is important because it may help us see if we have any cylinders that are trying to misfire or maybe even some cylinder bore scoring going on. This is something you don't hear a lot of people talking about, but it gives us a graphic image of how these engines, uh, the engine cylinders are performing. You know, even a bad spark plug can make the engine run a little bit rougher on one cylinder than another. But what I'm seeing here is that they're all just kind of bouncing around and they're all very close to the same. They're all less than one, okay? So if you ever have one of these that jumps up and it's like four or five, or I've seen them at 40 before, then that cylinder is gonna be an area of concern that you wanna look at. Again, we're just trying to get a picture of the vital steins of the engine before we perform this invasive work. It's a lot like going in to the doctor and the first thing they do is pull your vital signs before they do any procedure. We're just collecting this vital data to act as the vital signs for the engine before we kind of go in there and take care of it. Okay, so now the last thing we're going to check from our actual values perspective is just the fuel trim. So this is another, another video to help you understand how fuel trim works. We're not going to do that today. You can go Google fuel trim and FRA and FRAU and all these other things, long term, term and short term fuel trim. But basically, we're just looking for the values to be around one. And anything up to about 1.05 is good. Anything less than like 0.95 is good. Um, and these are very stable, 1.02 and 0.99. Now, we typically will do this with the engine at idle, fully warmed up, with the air conditioning turned off so the idle speed is down, just so we are able to have those good, repeatable results and don't have the AC cycling on and things like that, okay? So now that we've done that, I'm gonna kind of go over a little bit about what we've learned about this engine. We're gonna go back and look at those over revs again. I wanna bring that back up to your attention since that's really the only thing of interest here that I've seen that I wanna bring over and kind of go over with you again. Okay, so now we're, we're back here in the information tab of the Durametric. And we are seeing that we had that number of ignitions of range one, 11,805, okay? Now, Again, that's not how many times the engine's been over revved. You can take that number to 65,556, I believe it is, because I've had a car that I did that to. It was one of my own, and I used it for test work, and I had that many over revs. That wasn't that many times it had been over revved. That was how many ignition cycles had basically been interrupted. So this one's 11,805. Uh, now, the main thing I want to show you here is the Operating hours counter now is 1,856 hours. So this car has 1,856 hours of runtime on it. Now, at 1,854 hours, two hours ago, basically, somebody missed a shift. They just hit the over rev, okay? It went to this range one over rev. That was not a zing. It was not anything catastrophic. They literally touched the over rev limiter one time. That's very easy to do. If you don't shift you know, for a split second sometimes, it'll pick up that over rev. Now, that's nothing to be concerned about, but it's just information that we're looking at. So the one over rev we have, the one instance, which I'm sure is just a phantom thing because it's only one that's in range two was at 1,026 hours. So if we had seen more than like 50 rev counts there, that would tell me that was a more significant over rev. That means somebody mechanically missed a shift. They missed a gear, you know, they went from fifth gear to second gear, they, they went from fourth to third when they were trying to go fourth to fifth. They have a short shift kit in the car, they're not used to it, and, and they haven't learned things about it. It's really easy to miss those shifts. Um, so I would not be worried about this car, but I wanted to bring us back to this because this is the only kind of gripe that I found while doing my interrogation with this car and it's something that you need to understand. Now, what this means, if you see a lot of numbers here, the car has been tracked or has been driven very hard, okay? Um, 
if you see that number up in the thousands, that is a significant amount of over revs this car has, has seen. And usually that goes hand in hand with a lot of track time. Now, what I like to do, if I've seen a lot of numbers in that range too, and we are within 50 operating hours, I start thinking that there's a problem that could jump up and I, I will let my customer know that. Um, and either he would have to sign a waiver with understanding that there was a lot of over revs in the car or we would not do the procedure, okay? So this is certainly grounds for disqualification for the IMS pre-qualification procedure. And if you have a later car that has the six different ranges, you're worried about ranges three uh, through six more than you are one through three. So when you see something from range four, five, and six, those are significant. Basically, all the factory did was break down range one with this car into three ranges, one, two, and three, and break down range two with this car into basically four, five, and six. So with a newer car, if you start seeing a lot of range fours, fives, or certainly sixes, that's a big deal. Uh, you're probably not going to see a range five or six because a lot of times those engines will fail um, pretty soon thereafter. 